The message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there's a God-given design for its study. Rightly divided, the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for an interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, President of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join him now. We're certainly glad you've joined us today. We do trust that our time together in God's Word will be a rich blessing and help to you as we look again into the pages of the Scripture to allow the Spirit of God to teach us through His Word. In our study together today, I want to, I want to look at the, the most important book that you, you could ever read, the most important book that you could ever understand in the most important book in all the world. Now, the most important book in all the world, of course, is the Word of God, the Bible. And if you've got a King James Bible, you've got God's Word in the English language, the way God intends for you to have it. And as you read it, you're reading what God would say to you. It's a message from God Himself in written forms that can be preserved through history and made available to everyone uh, to have their own personal copy. There's God talking to you. But when you begin to read the Bible, there's always a, the question is, what should I read first? I want to tell you, there's one book... In the Bible, if you never read any other book, this is the book to read. It's the most important book you'll ever read. It's the most transforming book you'll ever understand. And it's the book in the Bible called the Book of Romans. Uh, the Book of Romans begins, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. It starts out with the name of Paul. There are 13 books in the Bible that begin with Paul's name. He wrote 13 epistles, and that's because... He, uh, Paul is a very special person in the Bible, a special person for you and me today in the dispensation of the grace of God. Uh, if you come over to Romans chapter number 11, you'll see what, 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 uh, why I say that. Romans chapter number 11, verse number 13, Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles, in, in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Now that's very important that you understand what he's saying there. When he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, separated under the gospel of God, that's something very special. Because Paul is the special spokesman of God to the Gentiles, to the nations of the world today. That's why the book of Romans is so important for you and me today. Because the, it's a message directly from God through our apostle, the apostle Paul. It's a very special message for you and me today in the dispensation of grace. Paul says, I speak to you Gentiles. Ever, in your Bible, until you come to the book of Romans, the issue has not been Gentiles. Up until this point, the issue has been the nation Israel. Come with me if you're in Romans 11. Look over at Romans chapter number 15. Romans chapter 15. Romans 15, verse number 8. Paul says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister. Now understand, the Lord Jesus Christ is God, who is the creator of all things who became, the Word became flesh and dwell among us. And when He became a man, He came to the earth in His earthly ministry, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and He was a minister. He was not just God, He was God in human flesh. But He wasn't just here to be the sacrifice for our sins on the cross. He came also to be a minister, to be a teacher. He spent three and a half years as a prophet, a proclaimer of God's Word. And he says, Romans 15, 8, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. In other words, God has a plan and a purpose that he has written down in his scripture. And when Jesus Christ came in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the way that the, the, the word of God was designed was for him to be a minister of the circumcision, a minister of the nation Israel. And as a minister of the nation Israel, he came and proclaimed himself. That's why he presents himself in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'll get the chalkboard out and just draw a little diagram here to, to, to illustrate that just so that... Uh, that we, we keep ourselves on, 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 on track here. In time past, uh, the Apostle Paul says in, in Ephesians chapter number 
two, that, there, that time past is made up of a period of time when God dealt with men on the basis of a distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. That's Ephesians chapter number two, verse 11 and 12. In time past back here, when Jesus Christ came, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he came as a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God. Here's the truth of God been written down back here as it is written. God has proclaimed, prophesied, made known His truth. Jesus Christ, when He comes here in these books before His crucifixion, before His death, before His resurrection, before His ascension into heaven, the Holy Spirit comes on the day of Pentecost over here as the book of Acts begins in here. But back in here, Jesus Christ is a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Now, if you look down at verse number 16 in Romans 15, Romans 15, verse number 15, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written unto you, uh, the more boldly unto you, in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. Here's the Apostle Paul over here. Later on in the book of Acts, here comes the Apostle Paul, and he says, there's been some grace given to me from God. Jesus Christ up here in heaven has given to Paul some, some grace, a special favor. What is that special favor? that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So Jesus Christ is a minister of the circumcision. He's a minister for the nation Israel back here in his earthly ministry. And he's that so that the promises that God has made, the things that God had written back here in time past in the Scripture, might be fulfilled. Now what he had written about, was the fact that the Messiah was going to come and set up a kingdom out here, and through the nation Israel, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. God told Abraham, I'll bless you, and then in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So God had this promise, this, this plan, that through the nation Israel, he would bless the nations of the earth. Jesus Christ came to accomplish that, to bring it to pass. He's the minister of the circumcision. Again, Gentiles are the uncircumcision. In his earthly ministry, what did he say? When he gives the great commission to, to the twelve apostles and he sends them out on, on their commission in Matthew 10, he says, go not into the way of the Gentiles. And in the city of the Samaritans, go, go, go not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he should go preach saying, repent, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's, there's a, some wrath that's going to come, come upon the world here and upon the nation of Israel to purge out the rebel. And they needed to repent and be that group who would go in and inherit the kingdom. That was the issue. That's why he says, I'm not sent. He doesn't send them to, the, to, the, to, to don't go to the way of the Gentile. Because Israel first had to be filled. In Matthew 15, when a Syrophoenician, this, this Greek woman, came to him. And she wanted him to heal her daughter. He says, he doesn't even talk to her. Matthew 15, 24, he says to his, his disciples, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now why is that? You see, back here the ministry was to and through the nation Israel. But when you come over here to Paul, something's changed. When you come to the book of Romans, all of a sudden, instead of it being through Israel, now through the fall of Israel, salvation's gone to the Gentiles, and now over here in Paul's epistles, everybody's on an equal basis. There's, a different, there's, there's been a change. If you go back to Romans chapter 1, you'll see how, how he develops it there. Romans chapter 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God, which he has promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. You see, there's things that God had promised and talked about back here concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made to the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the, res the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom, by this resurrected Christ, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. It was the Lord Jesus Christ after he's died, been buried, resurrected, and ascended up here in resurrection at the Father's right hand, that Paul received his apostleship. Jesus Christ in heaven, from heaven, commissioned Paul. The Apostle Paul is the only apostle appointed directly, personally by Jesus Christ in the Bible from heaven. The other apostles, the twelve apostles back here, 
were appointed by Christ when he, uh, uh, on, on earth. Now, that distinction between being appointed by Christ on earth and being appointed by Christ from heaven, when Christ is in heaven, the position there is extremely important in your Bible. It's the great divide in the Bible. The reason there are twelve apostles is because Matthew 19.28 says that you twelve, you which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit upon the throne of His glory. What is that? When the Son of Man shall come with all His holy angels to sit upon the throne of His glory, Matthew 25.31. That's talking about the second coming of Christ and the kingdom that He's going to establish when He comes. You which have followed me, you twelve, when the Son of Man shall sit upon the throne of His glory over here in the regeneration, you twelve will sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The reason there are twelve apostles is because they are Israel's apostles. The reason He establishes, appoints them as apostles when He's on the earth is because God's purpose for the nation Israel is an earthly kingdom purpose. He goes away to heaven and then he appoints one apostle from heaven, the apostle Paul, because there's one body of Christ in here where the distinctions are done away with, that, and we are a heavenly people with a heavenly purpose. Now that distinction between the heavens and the earth ought to bring a verse of scripture into your, into your mind. You remember the first verse in the Bible? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That when God describes the creation of the universe, He divides it into two distinct realms. One He calls the heaven, and the other He calls the earth. And then the very next verse, Genesis 1-2, He says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And from that verse onward, all the way down to the minute to the time when you see the salvation of, of, of Saul of Tarsus, the commissioning of Saul as Paul the Apostle, the focus in your Bible is on the earth, the earth, the earth. He puts man, he makes man out of the dust of the earth. Commissions him to go out and conquer the earth and bring it back into the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, the headship of Christ. When man fails, he promises man a seed of the woman. Uh, uh, someone of the earth, earthy. And the seed of the woman becomes the seed of Abraham, and the seed of Abraham becomes the nation Israel. And that nation is given this promise by God, and a covenant from God, things that God wrote down, that it would be through them that He brings in the, the one who provides and, and establishes this kingdom and reclaims the earth. And the focus all through there is His purpose and His plan to establish His kingdom and the headship of Jesus Christ over planet earth. It's not until you come to the ministry of Saul of Tarsus, Saul tell, told uh, Agrippa, he said, O king, wherefore king, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. A vision that came to him, a commission that came to him from heaven, Verse 5 there in Romans 1, by whom we have received grace and apostleship. We've received grace and apostleship. The grace, hold your hand and come to Ephesians chapter number 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Paul says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, right here, which is given to me, some information about the grace of God to be dispensed out. It's given to me, Paul says, from Christ. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. Now that's important. This information about this grace is called a mystery. What does that mean? Verse 5, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed. A mystery is something that previously was kept secret, but now is revealed. You see, in the Bible, a mystery is not something that's kind of a hoodly-doo. It's not some mystery of the faith where you look at something and you know looking at it and chemically analyzing it and physically examining it, it's one thing, but then you sort of have this superstitious little twist and make it into something else. Religion does that, you know. While there's a religionized version of Christianity, they'll take a little bottle of hooch, a little, little, little chalice of hooch, ring a bell over it and tell you it turns in, it, it, it quits being hooch and becomes blood. You chemically analyze that well, you don't have to do that. Just drink it. And you know it's not blood. It's still hooch. <laughs> you say, well, 
That's the mystery of the faith. No, that's just superstitious nonsense. That's all that. In the Bible, a mystery is not superstitious nonsense. A mystery is simply a secret that nobody knew, but now we do. In other ages, it was not made known as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Where did that mystery come from? Verse 3, how that by revelation he, Christ, made known to me, Paul, this secret, the mystery, which in other ages was not made known as it's now revealed. Verse number 7, where, where, uh, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. When he says, I was given grace and apostleship, here's the grace. That unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable, you can't find it back here, riches of Christ. John chapter 5, verse 39, Jesus tells the, the Pharisees and the religious leaders of Israel, He says, search the Scripture for in them that you, you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. Paul said, I'm preaching a message about Jesus Christ that you can't search in the Scriptures because it's unsearchable. And part of the special privilege given to Paul was to reveal this information that isn't found in previous revelation in the Word of God. That's why when you come to the book of Romans and it starts Paul, this is a special book and a special message for you and for me in the dispensation in which we live today. Now that word dispensation, people use that in religion. Religion likes to come along and take good Bible words and... and sully them up. <laughs> you won't let the Bible define its own definitions, define its own terms, use its own definitions. In the Bible of dispensation, well, you know what it, what it is to dispense something, it's to give it out. A, that's the verb. A dispensation is that which is given out. It's a particular set of instructions, it's a particular message that God has given out. That's why we talk about the law back here, and talk about the law and the dispensation of the law. Why? Because God gave out a message, a particular set of instructions to be obeyed by a particular set of people. In here, you have the, what Paul calls the dispensation of the grace of God. Colossians, he calls it the dispensation of God, even the mystery. So it's this giving out of this information in here. And it's especially given to the Apostle Paul to do that. And so the book of Romans, and, and by the way, you go back here to Genesis 1 and you begin to talk about the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and God's, the, the, the earth begins to be discussed back here. In Acts chapter 2, verse number 21, when Peter's talking about what's going on back here in the early Acts period, he says that what's going on right here is that which is spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. We call that prophecy. That which has been spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, this is what God's been revealing. Peter says that's, what we're, that's what's happening right here in, in, in Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But when you come to Paul and his ministry that begins in Acts chapter 9, Paul says in Romans 16, 25, that this is the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. So you have prophecy, which is spoken since the world began, preached about, prophesied, made known, and the secret, the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. If words mean anything, and if they don't, then what we're doing here is nonsense. But if words mean anything... There's a program in time past that was spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. And there's a program that began with the Apostle Paul that was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. If words mean anything on the page of the Bible, those two programs are not the same. Now you can, you can beat your head against the wall until you're bloody and addle-brained. It won't make any difference. You can take a deep breath, relax. I know, you know, I, I know you get up tight when something in the Bible contradicts what you thought it was going to say. We're not here to tell you 
what we think about the Bible. We're going to talk about what the Bible actually says for itself. And when you study what God's Word actually says, you find out that it says things that are much different than what you thought and you presumed that it was going to say. One of those is religion. One of them is the Word of Life. In the Scripture, it's very clear that there's a distinction between prophecy and mystery. And that distinction focuses on a distinction between God's purpose in the heavens and His purpose in the earth. Hence, a distinction between His agency, the circumcision, that is Israel, and an agency called the church, the body of Christ, that focuses on the Gentiles. Now the reason he calls it the apostle of the Gentiles, the word Gentile simply means the nations, plural. You say, but what about Israel? Well, with the fall of Israel and salvation going to the Gentiles, you know where Israel went? Israel fell down here and is no longer treated any differently before God than any other nation in the earth. Now, don't misunderstand. One day, when the dispensation of grace is over, he's going to go back and finish the promises he made to Israel. Don't you think for a minute that God ever made Israel a promise, wrote it down in his word, made a covenant with him, and he'll fail to do it. If he fails to do what he said he'd do with Israel, he could fail to do what he said he'd do with you. In fact, in Jeremiah 31, he says that if I don't do what I promised it, you know what it'll take for get me to stop doing what I'm going to do with Israel? You got to get rid of the stars and the planets and the earth and the, all the ordinances of the universe. Because as long as the universe is here, the reason that he created the nation Israel exists. All this stuff, you know, that we replaced Israel, that we become Israel, that we're Israel, we're the blood people of God. All that is, the, is some more that religious hoodly do. Everybody trying to be somebody other than who God made them. And when you get all this, and I realize, listen, I understand. Dispensational Bible study is not popular. Never has been. So, <laughs> big deal. A lot of things aren't popular that are right. The question isn't, is it popular? The question isn't, who taught it? The question isn't, what does the verses on the page of the book say? And when you find out what it says, you find out that God isn't through with the nation Israel. He's temporarily set them aside. Today, they're enemies for the gospel's sake, but they're beloved for the Father's sake, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, Romans 11 says. So God's going to finish His covenant with Israel. He had not abandoned it. He's just temporarily postponed it in order to do something different. That is from the body of Christ. That's where the Apostle Paul comes in in your Bible. So when you come to the book of Romans, it stands at the head of Paul's epistles to explain all this new information, the new thing God's doing. So when you come to the book of Romans, and you see that name Paul, immediately in your Bible study, you know you've come to a tremendously new set of information. And for 13 books in your Bible, you're going to find information that is particularly and especially aimed at you and me today. Now, Matthew to John's Back to the Earth of Mr. Christ, the book of Acts, you have the offer of repentance given to Israel, the fall of Israel. Romans to Philemon is, is, is where we are. And then the books of Hebrews through Revelation. By the way, who in the world do you think the book of Hebrews might be about? Wow. <laughs> Not hard to figure that one out, is it? Hebrews 2 says that what Hebrews is about, how should we escape if we neglect so great salvation that began, that began to be spoken by the Lord at the first back here, was confirmed to us so that by them that heard him, the Holy Ghost bearing them witness, book of Acts. And he says that, that, that uh, under which of the angels said to put in subjection the world to come, where if we speak, Hebrews is talking about, there's time past, but now, and the age is to come. And it connects with this ministry back here. This one, information in here, when the body of Christ goes out, Hebrews picks up again. Now, go back to Romans 1. When you come to the book of Romans, understanding why it's so important, verse number 11, Paul said, For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end that you may be established. At the very last of the book, 
The last two couple of verses in the book, Romans 16, 25. Now to him there's a power to establish you. God desires for your life to be stable. He doesn't want your life to be up and down. Up one minute, down the next. You go through experiences. You get up on mountaintops and you go down through the valleys. I understand that. Sometimes you're down at the pit at the bottom of the valley. Sometimes you're up in the rarefied mountain of the mountaintop. That's your experiences. But God in those experiences doesn't want you to be up and down. He wants you to be stable. So that no matter what experience you are in, no matter what circumstance you're in, you're able to live right there with the excellency, the power of God's grace, working through the power of His Word for you to handle whatever the circumstance is. Paul said, I, I, I want to give you that. That's why he wrote the book of Romans. What does it mean to be established? Verse chapter 1, verse 12. That is, that I, may, that, that, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Paul said, if you want to be established, if you want to be stable, if you want to have a successful Christian life, you need to have a mutual faith. You need to believe the same thing I believe. You need to take Paul's epistles and put your life and stand in the truth that's been revealed to you through the Apostle Paul. You go back and try to follow Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and your life's going to be turmoil. You put, try to build your life in the book of Acts, you're going to have absolute confusion. You take the truth that God gave you through the Apostle Paul, Romans and Philemon, that'll be a firm foundation, and you'll see success in your Christian life. Your faith, resting in an intelligent understanding of who God has made you in Christ, revealed through Paul's epistles, is the key to the Christian life. We're going to be talking about that the next few weeks. Don't you miss a time when we're together. Until then, we're not. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for that message from the Word of God. Friends, we have an audio CD we would like you to have to go along with today's study. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thank you for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy along with a free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal. If you simply write us here at The Message of Grace, the address should be on your screen. That's The Message of Grace. P.O. Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you may also call us at regular business hours, toll-free, 888-535-2300. The Message of Grace is a ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us today. If our study together has been a help to you, we would be happy to put you in touch with a Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed from His rightly divided Word. And friend, if you are still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know, and we'll be happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. That address again is The Message of Grace, P.O. Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's best until we meet next time for another message of grace.